Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the media item properties part four in Reaper. Now in the previous three videos, we went over the media item properties for these sections over here. Over here, we have the take envelopes. Now these shouldn't be confused with the track envelopes. Right over here, where we could adjust our volume, pan, and mute. Those are based on our tracks. While the take envelopes are based on our items or our takes. So if we choose this, we can create a volume envelope just for this item, control on the PC, command on the Mac, and just draw in a volume envelope, which is pre effects and pre fader. Do the same for a pan envelope. Or mute or even pitch. Now pitch is kind of my favorite because this is the only place in Reaper we could adjust the pitch with an envelope. There's no pitch envelope on the track. So you can just draw to create pitch changes like this. So it sounds like speeding up and slowing down a record. Then we have the pitch shift time stretch mode, which is the algorithm we're using if we readjust the playback rate or change the pitch. And we can see it's set up to be the project default, which we could see in the project settings. Right over here is the default pitch shift mode, which you could change the default of for all the items right over here. And we could also change the pitch shift parameter to preserve formats for lower pitches or higher pitches, again, for all our items by default. But we could change it for each item right over here, change it to a different algorithm, and also change whether it preserves formats in the lower or higher pitches. Then we have the stretch markers fade size right here and the mode or the algorithm for stretch markers. And again, it's set to project defaults, which we could see in the project settings right down here. They're set up by default to be balanced, but we could change it to be tonal optimized, transient optimized, or no pre echo reduction. Again, this is the default for all the items, but we could change it by item right over here and set each one for the algorithm more appropriate for that sound source, like transient optimized for drums or percussion or tonal optimized for piano or guitars. Next, we have the take media source. Now you can't really do anything with this. We can just see the name of the file, but we can also check the properties of that file right over here. We can see its path on our hard drive, the length of it, the sample rate, but again, we can't change anything here. We can just see the properties for the file. And over here, we could readjust the section we're working with. By default, we could use the entire file. But if we wanted to cut that down and use less, we could do that here. This is the entire length of the file, which is a loop. Instead of it sounding like this, as a pretty long loop, we could shorten it here by dividing this number by eight. And now we can see the looping happens a lot quicker using a shorter section of the file. We can cut it in half again. And now it loops even quicker. And we could also readjust the start of the section we're working with. 
Let's bring it in a bit. And now it sounds like this. Or a bit more. So we can readjust the section of the file that we can work with. Now, right down here, we can reverse our item. Just choose it and apply it. And now our loop is going to play in reverse. And we could do it with any item we choose. Let's choose these kicks and snares, reverse them, apply it. And we could undo it just by selecting all those items, uncheck reverse, and apply it. And it's back to normal. Now right over here, we could choose a whole new file to take the place of the current one. This is really useful for replacing sounds on the fly. For example, over here we have a snare. Let's select all of them by double clicking the track. Let's sew it. Let's say we want to replace all these snares with a clap. Just choose New File. Reaper is going to ask us if we want to change the media source for all these files. Then we can just choose from our hard drive any sound we want to use. Let's choose this clap. Now the clap replaced our snare. And then right over here, we can rename our file. Now you want to be careful with this because we're renaming the file on our hard drive. And if there's another project that uses that file, Reaper might not be able to find the file if we change the name. Then down over here, we can nudge or set our item, which is going to allow us to nudge the position, the trim, the contents based on measures and beats, frames, item selections, all from this window. But we don't have to open up the media item properties to use this function. At any point, we can go to the edit menu and choose nudge set items to open up that dialog. Reba just puts it down here in case you want to use it while this dialog is already open. And then finally, we have the take effects, which are different than our track effects over here. These effects are on the track, while the take effects or item effects can be placed on each item. Just click it to open up the effects browser, and we can add our effects right from here. But honestly, we could do that at any point just by selecting our items, type Shift E. That also opens up the effects browser. And we can add effects directly to our items. So that's the media item properties. Like I said, it's very useful for checking out the settings or the stats for our items, but also for editing on the fly, especially with multiple items. Let's say we want to fade out all these items together with a 250 millisecond fade. We could just select them all, go to our fade out, type in the fade length, change the shape to a slow fade, hit apply, and it fades out all those items exactly the same way. And we could also use it for adjusting the length of our items all at the same time. Let's make it a quarter note, hit apply, and now the length of all these notes is a quarter note or half note that easily. So it's very useful for editing multiple things at the same time. So that's pretty much it. That's the media item properties in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you can use it and I'll see you next time. Thanks.